All right, college football study ball series, Bo Nix part two. All right, so back to part one. Uh, I know it's hard to tell on the tape sometimes about the technique. That was the one thing that kind of jumped out. Uh, and again, I don't want to say a negative, but something that you see that you go, okay, I want to see that clean up. His ability to create more power on his throws with his body. His ability to stand in the pocket and be a little bit more patient in the pocket uh, when things are happening around him. What we did see in the first tape, the real positives were decision making. His feel for the game, understanding what he was seeing and getting the ball out of his hands, okay? A lot of shorter, quicker throws. Not that they were bad decisions, not that they uh, were places that he shouldn't have gone with the football because most of them were good decisions, but their offense is built a lot more around the shorter throws. So let's see as we dive into this tape, this is going to be against USC, uh, if we see some more throws down the field, if we see some improvement in those other areas because we never want to just take one game and say, okay, that's who that player is. And it's why with all of these quarterbacks, I'm breaking down two different games because I'm trying to figure out and put it all together to give you guys at least an idea of who these players are, maybe what can translate at the next level because you're seeing it game after game after game. Taser okay, so coming out right off the bat, throw down the field. Play that we saw numerous times. Last game, inside fade, stick, hitch to one side. Now they're going to run the inside fade uh, with the hitch on the other side. He gets one-on-one -on, -one on the back side. We got pressed uh, or tight coverage with all these short throws so you don't really like it. Let's go work our one-on-one -on -one right here. Nice ball down the field. Puts it right on top of his guy, allows his guy to go adjust. Guy does a nice job making a play for him. And yeah, not bad when he can break the play and score a touchdown on something like that either. All right, I like it. Backside here, boom. The little wrap four on the backside. Not sure the full concept on the front side because they're kind of coming into each other here. It's like maybe a choice, but I uh, like, again, the idea and the recognition. He comes back to the weak side. This one backer is going to match to a swing. Wrap that in, back around it, boom. Ball's out of his hands. Again, I'd love to see a little bit of a hitch here, get back quicker. Little hitch, he likes to hit that back foot and let it go. But a nice read, nice play. Oh, geez, we're two for two, two completions, two long touchdowns. But again, timing, right? Being able to put the ball in a position for his guy to make a play, that's all part of the yak. Yep, he threw the ball 12, 15 yards, but it was a perfect throw, kept his guy going and allowed his guy to make a play for him. Ah. Okay, so again, technique, right? So again, I just want you to watch how many times we've seen this where it's not really a hitch up. Bo gets stuck right there. He's kind of holding on his back foot. This is a deep throw right here. We want to drop back. We want to get a hitch. We want to get our body going in the direction. This has been kind of um, really the, the focus of why he's missed a lot of these throws has been off with his accuracy, I think, because he's stuck on the back foot and trying to create all his power by holding and throwing. Quarterbacks, coaches out there, when a guy can hitch, hitch. When you can hitch, hitch. Okay, there's certain throws that are timing throws, hit the back foot, get the ball out. But this is not one of them. This is a deep throw, but he gets stuck on his back foot. Now he's trying to create the power and direction off of that back foot, and he misses what really is an easy opportunity right here. Right, he's got a couple different things. We've got the post and the over. Reading that free safety, maybe says the free safety comes down could take the post over the top of it, or he says, ah, it's all right, he's staying back enough. This is an easy throw right here, a throw you've got to make, but to me, it's more about the technique. I wanna see a hitch forward, hitch forward, and attack the throw, trying to create the power with the back foot and the arm, leads to inaccuracies. Ah. Now, not really sure what took him here, okay, because we're going to run this guy here on a go. we got a safety over here. I'm not sure what made him just decide to come back and throw this thing. Um, maybe it was simply he felt this guy fall off, so I'm going to give my guy one-on-one -on -one against a safety a shot. This is probably where the ball should go, right? This guy goes to take the post. This flat defender falls off. 
to take the corner. The underneath guy is the throw, but puts this ball out here and probably going to complete this. Safety's in a bad position. His guy ends up falling down here on this one. Just not really sure what the decision or why that decision was behind it with that safety sitting back there, but didn't hurt him. All right, so we come back here. So this is kind of what we call a fake mesh. Okay, so the mesh is this right here. Okay, so those guys are crossing. The two shallow routes are crossing. Now we're going to make it look like we're going to do that. And then these guys are going to pop out on pivot routes. So we're going to read this back first. Then we're going to work into our pivot route. Not sure why his eyes appeared to start this way first. But needless to say, he gets back here. Okay, as he comes back, boom, these two guys cover that. Replace right back in to the inside. Nice throw. Again, watch. Stuck on the back foot, okay? I know, not a big deal, but I wanna put this ball out in front of my receiver so he can catch it and replace out here where it's voided. See the ball back to the inside. Footwork, ball's back to the inside. We complete it, but we don't give our guy a chance to turn this direction away from the bodies, okay? So completion percentage this year, really high for Bo Nix. As I've watched the tape, the technique, cleaning up the technique can make him more accurate, okay? So completion percentage is not always indicative of accuracy. Accuracy is about putting the ball in the right position. We've seen a lot of load throws. We've seen a lot of guys have to go and move to get the catch instead of putting the ball right in front of them. Not this one. This one's awesome. Come back, okay? You're holding this guy. To this side, you got the seam coming back here. You got to throw this up and over this linebacker. Love it. Money throw right there. Come back. Boom. Again, I would like to see the quick hitch at his target instead of falling away, but can't ask for a better throw than that. Perfect throw on the money down the field. So we're seeing a few more throws down the field on that second level, which is so important. That was a really, really good throw right there. Love the read right here. So we're gonna run a pivot route. We're gonna run a shallow. We're gonna have this guy come in here, and then we're gonna follow this here. So he comes out and he peeks the pivot. One, doesn't like it, goes to the shallow. It gets chased. And now he works back in right here. This ball gets tipped up, but I like the process. One, two, three. There he is, finding the right guy. This ball doesn't get tipped, it's a touchdown. So that's one thing that continues to look really good with Bo Nix is his processing and getting the ball to the right guy. We just need to clean up some of the technique on how we get it to him. All right, so just a miscommunication right here. Okay, some people run these routes where it's a go route, and then if this guy stays high, you stop it here. Looks like Bo's trying to throw the back shoulder here, expecting him to keep going. Throws it out there. Guy stops on him. Hard to evaluate those throws. Not sure what really happened there, but you can see the miscommunication. I like it. I like it. Decision making continues to show up. I'm gonna go here to the corner. And then we're gonna run this double under. Everybody runs it. I'm reading number 13 right here. If he carries it all, he's that middle linebacker. If he carries it all, I wanna replace right underneath him. You see it right here, boom. Hit the back foot, get it out, right? This is one where I'm all for hitting the back foot. Understanding I get a carry. Wanna hit this guy quick and replace that. So we like hitting the back foot here. It's not one where we have the ability to hitch. We're not letting him run, but when you have the ability to hitch, hitch. When you don't, you gotta be able to plant, make the throw, good throw right there, good read. All right, let's go down the field again. So more down the field throws here. Really good job. This here and the go. We got one safety over to this side. That safety hangs inside on the hash. Come back, get it out. Nice ball, right on the money. Leading his guy, go get another big play. Okay, so similar play to what they ran down here before. They hit the seam for a touchdown. They've got this little juker replace right here. So I'm gonna come back, see if I can get that. I can drive that throw right now. If this guy gets depth at all, replace right underneath. 
There it is. Comes back. Looking over there, doesn't have it, sees the depth. Replace to your guy, got to be a catch right there. Good ball, right on his guy, got to make that one. Again, I like it, decision making, right? More concepts within this offense. Going to run down the middle of the field here, see if we get a carry. If we do, replace it with this angle right here. So you see the carry, get the carry by the inside linebacker, boom, we're gonna replace it right here. If this guy squeezes and covers it, we'll replace right behind it. Like the touch, like the timing, like the read, put it right on the guy's face, and we're rolling. Okay, here's another one with the footwork. Now, again, I know different people teach it different ways. Okay, so we've got a corner and a flat. So this is the pure progression. So this one is always number one and this is number two. I wish they would actually do it the opposite and make this number one and this number two. Why do you say that, Kurt? Because I want the feet to match the deeper throw. I don't want to set to a quick flat and then it's covered and I got to try to recover up to a deep throw. I want a seven step drop so I'm ready for the deep throw. Then I can work to the flat. Um, and again, I can still see the flat as I'm coming out on the seven steps and stop my feet and hit it if I know if it's open, but I don't like getting my feet stuck there because now if I take seven steps and let this play out, I'm gonna read this guy high low. So if I take seven steps, it does two things for me. First, it allows me to see if this corner is going to come down and give me the throw up over the top. But the other thing that it does is if I take seven steps and this guy wants to drop, he's gonna to continue to drop for the entirety of the seven steps. So this guy that's running to the flat is just gonna get more and more open because I'm forcing the corner to have to cover the deep one. When I throw the quick one too quickly like this, right, what's the corner do? Corner sees it comes off, right? He doesn't have to make a decision. He's already taken this one away simply by his position. Now you throw that and he's able to, because of his leverage, come up and cover the flat as well. So I'd love to see them take seven steps, right? Again, this is the quick drops that Bo likes to take and get the ball out of his hand. So I'd like to see him get back more, work that corner, read that high low, yet by the letter of the law, probably the right play and decision by him. So again, footwork can be better to me. Just watch the footwork. Watch how his footwork, boom, boom, and he kind of falls away on the throw. Now it's a great decision. It's a good throw. No problem with any of that, right? You got a triple slant over here. They void the middle. Once again, he does a nice job of recognizing where the voids are and gets the ball out. See if we can, ah, uh, tough to see. Okay, see how he's falling away after the throw, right? Can you see him? See how his body's automatically going back behind him. I wanna see that weight come forward and attack through that front hip. Doesn't have to be a whole lot here because it's a short throw, but I wanna see him finish forward. All of those things are about creating power. We're falling away. We're not bringing our power through to create the pace and the power for the throws. Okay, good read right here. Boom, hook, flat. Okay, so we wanna read this guy in here first. He gets a little bit of depth. We're going right to the hook. This corner, for some reason, wants to chase the hook. Then we work to the flat right here. But really well done. He gets the depth that he wants with this linebacker. Boom, ball's out of his hands. He's hitting it. These are the things that he does really, really well. The quick throws when he can hit the back foot and let it go is really where his wheelhouse is. Okay, getting here on the run. So same play that we saw, I think, in the last game. A go, a corner, and a flat. Okay, so what I really want to do here is I want to come out and see this corner first. So make sure the corner covers the go route. Then we're going to read this high-low right here. Now this one's not easy, right? As he's coming out, this corner starts to slough off here. Now we can maybe say, oh, maybe he should have taken the go throw out there, but all of that is about timing. How long do I get to look at the corner and then read this? He's got depth by these two guys. Dump it down here to your back. Tough concept on the move, but good decision again. Love it. Love the read right here. So it looks as if they're gonna run some sort of choice here. 
choice. Then they're going to run the stop on the outside and a guy clearing out here. Okay, so we're coming out to read the choice. But what I love is that he sees the corner off and he basically can read this defender. This defender starts running out underneath the stop, then you work your choice. Your choice might win anyways, but I love that this guy's stuck inside. I'm not even waiting for my choice. I'm just taking it over the top to the stop route, boom. Really, really well done, good timing. I love the read. And a nice throw. It's a long throw from the backside hash to a stop route. Great job finding somebody right here. He's reading to the backside, okay? So they've got a hitch and a corner. Okay, I don't know why he didn't take one of these. Take the hitch right now. It's there right now. You come back to that side, okay? Right there. So like he's ready to throw it. Ball needs to come out right now. This is not a hitch throw. Okay, if you're taking the hitch, it's not a hitch throw. If you're not taking the hitch, or I'm saying if you're not taking, yeah. Okay, so a hitch throw meaning quarterback hitching, okay? This is also a hitch route, okay? So I want to make sure that I'm clear. If you're coming out and taking this hitch route over here, then I don't want you to hitch. You want to hit the back foot, as we've been talking about, let the ball go. If you're going to take a hitch, then this really should be a read off of the corner where I should be back here looking at the corner as I'm dropping back and he should be able to tell me at the top of my drop. So if you are taking a hitch, this corner has squatted and gone here, throw your corner out. So footwork, and again, he pumps right there and I don't know who he's pumping to right here. Is he pumping to the hitch because he's late getting it out and he feels the corner jumping? Is he pumping to the corner and he's too early on that one? But again, the drops get him in a little bit of problem right here. No problem where he's looking, no problem with the high low. This guy's already starting to stop and drive. Should be in a position off of the hitch to be able to take that corner route right there. Now, great job spinning out of it, finding a guy, making the throw down the field. Okay, not really sure. Okay, so this particular play right here, what we call a stick play, so it's stick, flat, go. Then they're running the cross back here. So as you come out the front side, okay, we're looking to see if we've got man. And we've got man, 53 is chasing the back. There's the throw for me right now. Like right there, there's the throw. You got that much space looking to that side, and for some reason he's coming back here. now. He's going to have this as well. And so, you know, what, what, what is the read here? It might simply be, I'm looking at this guy. This guy takes off running that direction. Let's replace him with the cross. Again, I don't get to sit down and talk to him. If he's going to tell me that, I can live with that, although I'd still like him to peek this one first. If you feel like you have it, take it. Don't pass it up in hopes that you get something else. Even though I understand your theory, come out and read that front side because that guy's chasing all the way to your back. There's your throw. But now if the receiver cuts across and flattens this, this is probably an accurate throw and a good completion as well. For some reason, he kind of goes in and then goes up over the top. Not sure what the communication problem was there, but I'm one of those guys. Never like to pass up anything that's open for something that might be open. You know, something that you hope is going to be open, even if the theory behind it is really, really good. If you're reading out the front side and you're reading that guy who's on the backside backer and you're making him chase all the way to the front side, it's really hard to do. Even though if they're on the same page, it's probably a nice completion. Okay, so just kind of a mess here. I don't know, a bunch of guys stopping right here. It's another one of these mesh concepts. Got the back coming out of the backfield. So the way that I have kind of heard about it and the way I've run it when I've run it is you look at the back first because he's clearing it out and then you come right to this shallow and then from there you work the other shallow and the other hook. So on this one, right, I would think that this is all cleared out here. We want to hit this shallow over here coming. Now he's already trying to throw it right here. So I don't know if he's trying to throw this shallow really, really quickly. I never liked that. I always like to let my shallow get outside my backside tackle. So read it out the front side, let him run across. 
and then get it. Instead, he's kind of pumping here, and then he's going to try to find him late. Leads to bad throw right here. But the timing again was all off with that throw, whatever was going on. Okay, good decision. Running the double post, boom, boom, with the over and the flat. Okay, so double post, they got guys back there all over the place. Read your flat defender. Flat defender's way deep on this one. Boom, get the ball out of your hands. Love it. Another good decision right there. Get it out. Good ball. Nice run after catch. Okay, so not hot here. We come back. Gonna run this. Gonna run the wheel or shoot down the sideline and then the swing. Okay, I'd love for him to kind of peek this. Peek this safety. See if that safety stays inside there. Give this a shot and then come back to your swing. He comes to a swing really, really quickly here. But you see, here's the shot down the field. They got a big shot there. If he just comes back and settles in the pocket and then reads it out, he's got a shot down the field. And not that this is a bad decision, right? As he comes out, all of these guys are carrying and running. So this isn't a bad decision right here. But I want to see you look down the field, take the shots down the field, and then recover underneath. Another good ball there, good run after catch, but just had a shot down the field. But you see how quick he is in the drop. Get it out of your hands. Instead of reading through it and seeing if he's got something down the field. A little more patience in the pocket, right? We've talked about that a few times, whether it's guys around him or just allowing the play to develop a little bit more patience in the pocket. Again, here's another one. I'm going to plant the back foot. I'm going to throw it. I like to see him quicken up his feet, take a little bit of a hitch. They've got to go in and out. Okay, and this is going to happen quick, no question about it. But come out with your eyes on this corner and make sure he carries and then be ready to hit that ball underneath it. So I like the placement. I don't know if the placement is because he knows this guy's in cover two and he's hitting him on the back side shoulder or if it's because the feet are a little bit stiff. Uh, again, and he kind of stops in the pocket off that back foot if that leads to the ball being inside. Nonetheless, it's a good decision. It's where we want to go with the football. And we want to hit him in this void in between these two guys. Just like to see the footwork to not always be plant the back foot and throw. Get there quick. Hitch it up. Be more accurate with the throws. Okay, tough concept here. This is... Miami Dolphins run this. This is a read naked, okay? So they're doing this. So you come out off the read. If that defensive end squeezes, you pull it. And now you're kind of looking to see if there's a void happening for one of these two guys, and then you dump it to your flat underneath it. But USC covers it really well as they come out. There's not really a void here because he's pressed. Maybe a back shoulder throw there, but that's tough. Flat's covered. He tries to throw it back inside here, kind of a dangerous throw here, but throws it back to the inside, trying to make something happen. Not really a lot going on there on that particular play. So again, I, I, I'm not sure how they read this. Okay, so this is, to me, the same play we talked about, the pure progression. We're going here and we're coming down here on uh, the shallow route. And so to me, I'm gonna read this high-low again. I've got a high-low over here. One of these guys is gonna be open. What takes him back to the shallow quickly right here? Okay, it's drop ball, but see what we got here? See what we got? We got the high-low right here. Again, getting off something quick to hit this shallow, and I don't know, I don't know why. Maybe, you know, when, when you watch it, let's go back. Okay, they're walked up. Okay, these guys are walked up. Maybe he's thinking pressure, okay? Or maybe all of a sudden these guys go flying out of here and he wants to replace it with the shallow. But all of this kind of lends itself to patience. Relax. Relax in the pocket. They show pressure. They didn't bring pressure. They're playing cover two here. They got all kinds of bodies inside. Your read is right here. This is your throw and this is your read. Settle in the pocket. Settle in the pocket. Read this thing out. 
Now it's a good throw. He's going to get a completion right there. But to me, not necessarily the right throw based on the look and the time that you had. Right? We got a great shot here at this corner route down the field that we're passing up because we're getting to our shallow really, really quickly for some reason. What are you going to see again? Plant the back foot. Try to throw. No hitch. Why not a hitch? Okay, and again, maybe this isn't a hitch throw. We used to run this and I didn't have a hitch on it, but I was also lined up to, the, uh, to that quick post first. Notice that he's lined up in here, so if I'm not lined up in there, I want to get a hitch. Okay, so this concept to me, corner route, we're going to run a shallow, and we're going to run the quick post back behind it. So one of my favorite plays, F post, great. We read it. This guy's chasing the shallow, exactly what we want. Nobody's really covering the post. All good, gotta make the throw. But you can see, again, it's holding on the back foot. Watch his body. Watch his body after the throw. We'll go to the back copy. Okay, so we're coming out here. Boom, okay, where are his feet? Feet are aimed this way, trying to throw the ball this way. Gonna lead to inaccuracies for anybody and everybody. Then watch his body after the throw. See how it's falling away? So his weight's back instead of finishing through the throw. Easy completion right there. We got to make it. Got to make it. Okay, so don't know. Uh, again, we saw this earlier. This here, then the under, then the under. Okay, so he worked off of the carry by the middle guy and look to the strong side. They got an in and a swing here to the back side. Okay. So come out. Okay. I don't know. Before he took this one here, I don't know what took him off that side, but he comes back and hits this swing really, really quickly. Maybe this is something they talked about. Maybe he knew there was going to be a carry by the corner. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it's a good decision and it plays out well. The biggest thing is if this corner comes off, and we're going back here and we don't read it and just throw the swing. That guy's sitting there, but for some reason, he got back there really, really quickly. He got what he wanted, carry, carry, and he's got his throw. But again, see it, hit the back foot. Pop your feet, get set to that throw so you don't put the throw back behind him. Ah, tough to see. Throws on the back shoulder, tough to see right there. All right, so finish on that last one. Again, kind of a question. If I was sitting down with them, hey, take me through this play, this tape. You ran it and you threw it to the left side earlier. Now you're coming back and throwing the quick swing. Just let me know. What were you seeing? What did you talk about? Why did you get there? Good decision. You got to the open guy. Just want to know why we're doing that. Because there's times, as we've seen in both of the tapes, where he's quick in the pocket quick to get off of reads and just try to find a throw as opposed to settling in the pocket and reading what's in front of him. That's probably the biggest negative that I saw on these takes because you see the decision making, it's really, really good. Not putting the ball in harm's way. He's making all the throws, getting completions on all the throws. The technique, obviously the next thing that we want to clean up so those throws are really, really accurate. We're putting him in a position where their guy can do something with it or protect him from the hits or whatever that may be. And a lot of that could be cleaned up with that back foot, not wanting to always plant the back foot and throw. Get back there, get set, hitch it up, read while you're doing it, and then attack the throws a little bit better. But I love his decision making. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, just about every one of the throws, you're sitting back going, I see why you threw it there. Uh, that was a good decision. That guy's open. He's not forcing the football into bad positions um, it, you know, very often. And it's obviously why he had the great year that he had last couple years, a lot of touchdowns, very few interceptions, high completion percentage, because he finds the right guy and they're running a number of different concepts, which is also something that I love because that helps me to know that he can translate maybe uh, to, a, to an NFL playbook. Doesn't mean other guys can't if they've got a more simplified playbook, but it lets me know, hey, we've got a little bit more volume in this offense. We're asking you to do a little bit more, see a little bit more, read different things. Those are all things to me that bode well for Bo Nicks.